Okay, so I'm going to talk about how your weapon's damage math actually works, because people do indeed have it wrong on two different things all the way up until now. If you watched my Haley build guide, you might remember that I made it a point to ensure that my build calculator's predicted values would line up down to the decimal on the damage you actually dealt to bosses, and I am so, so glad I did, because it let me see that people have only really ever tested damage values on a laboratory Volgus instead of trying to see the actual realistic in-game scenarios like a boss, and I think that's fucking hilarious. Hilarious. Just like the reactor and skill power math video, we are going to start off super simple and establish a baseline formula for weapon damage and build on that formula as we cover more aspects of how it gets calculated and what bonuses can factor into it. And like before, we'll use pyro as our test dummy. Your weapon has a DPS unit and a firearm attack unit. DPS we're not going to discuss until the very end of the video, so for now we'll focus on firearm attack, which is literally just the damage it should deal while unmodified. But if I shoot pyro, I obviously don't deal that exact amount. That is because enemies have defense, resistances, etc. And while I do really want to talk about those, that is not going to be in this video. So for the sake of all testing to come, we'll just establish that Pyro has roughly 78.12% damage reduction against physical or gun damage. And if we apply that DR to our firearm attack, the damage lines up. The first bonus to factor in is the firearm attack bonus bucket. And for those unfamiliar, a bucket is literally just a type of multiplier where all sources of its bonus will add together to one number. So all sources of firearm attack add together into one number before multiplying with the rest of the damage. So in this case, the two most common examples of attack percent bonuses are rifling reinforcement and action and reaction. With attack percent, our damage now becomes base firearm attack times one plus the sum attack percent bonus, and adding in Pyro's gun DR, the value lines up. Next to consider is your weapon's physical damage type. That's that weird ass stat that shows up under your weapon saying pierce, crush, or burst, etc. And this is one of the two things that people got wrong in their weapon math, though this one isn't quite as severe as the other. If you hover over the stat in your weapon breakdown, it'll show that you deal bonus damage when you win in the rock-paper-scissor-esque arrangement that they have going on. If you deal pierce physical damage against a crush enemy, you'll deal bonus damage. If you deal burst to a pierce enemy, so on and so forth. What people have wrong here is how this bonus is applied and in what scenarios. If you test on a lab vulgus, and in my case I'll just use perforator again, you'll see that the damage bonus is simply 10%, as the tooltip would imply. But thankfully, we don't actually play the game against a level 1 laboratory vulgus. And because of that, I'm now going to swap to Magnus, and I'm going to go shoot Pyromaniac. And if we do the math, you'll see that Magnus is getting a 20% bonus against Pyro for winning the rock, paper, scissors. Now, what is impossible to prove right now is whether winning against the bosses in the type battle gives you an extra 10% for 10 plus 10 to get you 20, or whether it is doubling your 10% to get you that 20%. Because as far as I know, every weapon has a 10% physical damage base bonus. And if anyone is aware of another weapon stating more than 10%, let me know in the comments, and I will test it and add the info to the pinned comment so we can all know which way that is working. That said, I have seen so much misinfo on this particular point. I've seen people insist it's 10% on bosses, I've seen people say that you don't even do bonus damage on bosses, and I've seen people say that you do less damage for not winning the rock, paper, scissors on bosses, but that's bullshit. You just do the same damage as always without it. It also has nothing to do with the weapon archetype or category, by the way. So like shotgun, sniper, etc. Don't let anyone try to bait you down that rabbit hole. It has no bearing on how this factors in. Elites seem to take the same benefit as regular enemies as well. The only time I can and see this 20% bonus happening is on the Colossi and Colossi alone. To wrap this point up though, our equation changes to base attack times 1 plus attack percent bonuses times 1 plus 0.1 or 0.2, depending on the enemy that you're fighting, of course. The bonus on a Colossus will always be 20%, by the way, or nothing. You either get it or you don't. There is no in-between. But because of that, you need to remember that bosses do have different physical types on each of their individual weak points, and that is something we will talk way more about once we get to the weak point section, so let's put a pin in that one. Next are going to be the attribute attack bonuses, which come in two types, base attack and percent increases. I make this distinction because unless you have a base attribute attack roll on your weapon. Percent increases will do nothing for your damage at all. You can add base attribute attack to your weapon by either getting that roll we just discussed, or you can use a bullet enhancement category mod to convert a percent of your firearm attack to base attribute attack for that element. There is no math to do when the weapon attribute roll is on your gun, you just add that value, but when it comes to the bullet enhancements, the math is pretty important. For bullet enhancement attack, the equation is base attack times 1 plus attack percent bonuses, and then times the attribute conversion rate. Then 
if you have an attribute attack percent mod, like refrigerate gun barrel or priority mods, then all you do is add in the flat bonus from your weapon roll, if you have one, and then multiply it all by one plus the attribute percent bonus. A few extremely important notes when talking about attribute attack bonuses, they are not considered physical damage. They are considered pure attribute damage and are dealt as a separate instance of damage. Despite being a separate instance of damage, they can crit, and their crit is tied to the bullet they hit with. So if the bullet crits, the attribute will always crit with it, and if the bullet fails to crit, the attribute won't either. On top of that, attribute attack cannot benefit from weak point modifiers. So in terms of attribute attack, other than adding crit damage, this is as far as the attribute attack calculation will ever go. Last in the attack category are faction bonuses. There are technically four faction bonuses that can pop up on your weapon at any given time, but let's be honest, the other three aren't real, and the only one that matters is firearm attack versus colossus. This bonus is still typically going to be best in slot on almost every weapon imaginable, but I will admit it is not nearly as cool as bonus skill attack versus colossus on reactors, and that is because it adds in after literally fucking everything we just talked about. It doesn't add into your base attack, doesn't benefit from attack percent bonuses, and it doesn't get added into the attribute damage equation either in order to boost your attribute attack, but it does at least add into the total attack before the physical bonus is applied. So just to reiterate before we go talk about crits and weak points, our equation for gun damage so far is base firearm attack times one plus attack percent bonuses plus faction attack and then times one plus the physical bonus. Whereas the equation for attribute attack is flat attribute attack plus the sum conversion attack times one plus the attribute attack percent bonus, where the sum conversion is equal to base firearm attack times one plus attack percent times the attribute conversion amount. Really quick, we will talk about crit damage, which I completely forgot about in the skill damage video, but it works identically and it's typically self-explanatory as fuck, so it's kind of whatever. Your weapon will state a crit damage multiplier, and any percent increases you have are to the base multiplier. So if a weapon has a two times multiplier and you have a 50% increase, you take the two times multiplier times one plus the 0.5, the resulting multiplier will now be three. And then crit rate is obviously just the chance at which you have to apply that crit damage to your attacks. Last thing to talk about for standard weapon damage is your weak point damage. And this is the thing I am confident that nobody has the right math for. Weak points are a super common concept in a lot of games, just hit an enemy in a certain area and you will generally have a harder time hitting it, but you are also rewarded for hitting it with a bonus multiplier to your damage. On standard enemies, you can pretty much guess the weak points, just headshots, glowing parts on their bodies, etc. But for Colossi, if you ever aren't sure which are the weak points, you can activate your receive and the weak points will glow. This functions almost identically to crit damage, except you don't have a chance to activate the damage multiplier. It is guaranteed so long as you land the hit. However, what makes this confusing from a damage standpoint is that your weak point damage will never line up with your multiplier on your weapons. And that's because there is a hidden bonus to weak points that comes in after the weak point multiplier math is already done. And that's something a lot of people are actually already aware of. It's not where they're getting it wrong though, which I'll talk about in a second. To explain what I mean by that real quick, let's say we have a weak point multiplier of 1.8, and then we have a 90% sum weak point bonus from mods, weapon rolls, etc. We take the multiplier of 1.8 times it by 1 plus 0.9, which will then equal a weak point multiplier of 3.42. It is only once we have that 3.42 end number that this hidden bonus comes in as an additive bonus. So the total weak point multiplier is calculated how I show here. A lot of people are going to tell you that this is a hidden additive bonus of 0.5, and that's where people start to go wrong because it changes depending on where you're fighting or what you're fighting. And since surely you are all gamers who test in practical, realistic scenarios, you can all guess where that is, right? Definitely not Colossi. Stop testing in the fucking lab. If you only test there without checking other places too, more often than not, your math is going to be turbo fucked, just like all the other vids out there trying to cover this. First, let's give a quick example of the hidden weak point modifier, just regular enemies. So I'll just use a Lab Vulgus again, level one order of truth. A body shot is going to deal exactly the firearm attack of 36, 141, and a weak point hit will do 90,540. Wave has a weak point multiplier of 1.8, and the weapon roll has an 11.4 bonus. So 1.8 times 1.114 equals 2.0052. Were there no hidden bonus, our original damage of 36,141 would be multiplied by that 2.0052 and come out to 72,469, which is not the number we see. But if we take our damage and change the weak point multiplier to add in that flat 0.5, bring it up to 2.5, 
5052, then our damage does come out to the observed 90,540 and some change. Also real quick, do not trust the game display for weak point multipliers. I mean this as in the game display on the weapon stats will show the weapon roll factored in, so if you have like a weak point bonus on your stats, but it cuts it off after the third decimal. So instead of showing your multiplier as 2.0052, it just shows it as 2.005. That 0 0.0002 matters. And a quick example on wave again, say we skip the two at the end of our total multiplier, say it's 2.505, then our damage would be 90,533, which is a full seven off from the observed damage number. These are not differences you get to brush off, and I see way too many people doing that. If you aren't seeing values line up within a tolerance of one, since the game doesn't show decimals on the damage numbers displayed, there's always going to be a tiny, tiny bit of difference, and you can't identify why it's off, then your math is just fucking wrong. It's not a haha -ha close enough, because as the numbers get larger and larger, the differences can result in being fucking millions off. Now this is where shit gets real fun though, and once you see this you're going to understand why not a single person has been able to explain why they got the numbers they got on a boss's weak point, and that is every weak point on every boss has its own unique hidden bonus. So technically that means for as many weak points a boss has on their body, you can have that many different weak point damage numbers from the same gun under the same bonuses. Think I'm fucking crazy? Let's talk about boss weak point types. Again, we will refer to Pyro. If you look at Pyro's boss screen in the top left, you'll see that it says his weak point type is Pierce, but then if you look at all his weak points in all three display tabs, none of them are actually Pierce, so what the fuck is going on? It's not saying what type of enemy he is, it's saying what type you need to achieve that bonus against him. So when it says Pierce in the top left, it's saying that the damage type you need to get the bonus when hitting body shot is Pierce. And that's why the Magnus on our earlier tests achieves a 20% bonus on Pyro, but only on body shots. Moving on from the body shot type, it's saying that his shoulders, core, and core cover need burst, and then his head temple plating and his knees need crush to get the bonus. The physical type has nothing to do with the custom weak point modifiers that each weak point will have that we'll discuss in a minute. I'm only clarifying these types so you'll understand why I apply the physical type bonus in some of these cases, and because I'm able to line it up with these bonuses, I hope you are able to see how these weak point modifiers line up. Because now let's look at some math. Afterglow is a crush weapon, meaning it won't see a type bonus against the body, shoulders, core, or core cover. That does mean, though, that it will see a bonus against the knees and the head panels. Afterglow Sword has a base weak point modifier of 1.8, though my weapon has a roll which gives it an 11.5% bonus, so 1.8 times 1.115 equals 2.007. Regardless of whether you have the type bonus or not, Pyro's weak points have the following hidden flat additive bonuses. So to liken this to a regular enemy again, a regular enemy seems to give the full 0.5 hidden bonus on any weak point you hit, but on the boss it really depends on where. If we line up body shot damage against each resulting weak point number, everything matches up if we assume that each weak point is its own additive modifier, as I suggest. Some of you might say it's just dumb luck that the values line up how I suggested they might, and I'll admit it is dumb luck that I stumbled on how it actually works, because I spent several hours working on the Haley video trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. But if we swap to Nazistra's Devotion, which is a burst weapon instead of a crush weapon, this means it won't see the same type bonus on the knees or head anymore, but it will on the shoulder and core. And sure enough, if we apply the type bonus in the new places and apply the custom weak point values, it all lines up again. I am not wrong on this, guys, and it's not chance that it lines up like this. This is precisely how you would calculate your weak point damage against hard mode pyro, and there's zero room for doubt on that. The better question now is does each bonus have their own set of modifiers? Because if so, holy fuck, that's cancer. Okay, so I'm back, and I'm glad I just went and tested all the bosses, because guess what? They do. I already gave Pyromaniac's weak point modifiers as an example here, and I am not going to cover every boss in this video because I'm already fucking sick of talking. So if you're interested in the weak point modifiers for each part on every boss, I added all of this information to my website so that we can use it as a reference in the future. Thank you.